Uh, we'll we'll go ahead then. Uh, morning, James. Uh, hope you're well. Uh, this is the first of three games in seven days. Uh, how much of a how much of a test is that for the for the squad physically and for you as a manager? Um, I think every game is a test. I think with this one, it's the the travel elements and and the the journeys we got to take. But that's football. That's life. That's what we. That's why we prepare like we do in training and for. Um, in the meetings that we do and the environment we set is to prepare for things like this. So I'm really comfortable with it. We've just got to take it game by game and our first one, Stevenage, tomorrow. And they call this, the, or we're close to, the business end of the season because after Stevenage, you're down to your last 10 games of the League Two campaign. Things getting serious now with you in a great position near the top of the table. Yeah, so it is, it is, and, and and probably I won't be able to hide away from it, but but I'll keep thinking with myself and the players that we're literally going game to game and, and focusing on what we need to do. Do you um I mean do you set targets about how many wins you think you would need in these eleven games now coming up? Yeah, in, internally we will. Um <laughs> I think internally. Um my staff and myself will do that with the players and we'll focus on that. But we have to, and I said it Saturday after the game, we've got to stay in the moment um, and we'll continue to stay in the moment and focus on what, what ultimately what, what Newport County need to do to, to put in a strong performance against, uh, against a team fighting for their lives. Well, it was a terrific one against uh, Bristol Rovers and James Waite, hopefully the first of many goals for Newport County. Yeah, I think I, think I keep saying it and, and, and maybe I might get shot down in it, but James is kind of, a long-term project for this football club and, and for us to develop and we'll keep doing that and we won't put pressure on James to, to do things. He's just, he's enjoying his football and he needs to continue to do that. Do you think though, uh, it's evidence that there is sort of talent to be tapped into at the Cymru Premier level because you don't always see many players make that step up from from that level to 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 the EFL? No, no, you don't. Um, I think that one, it's me knowing the player and the individual, um, and I've known him for a long time. I think that was one thing in that, and I knew that he had the the potential to 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 play at this level. I, I had a belief that he had a potential to play at Cardiff um, within the right team. He can do that, and I generally believe within our team, he can he can produce. Was there an attempt to try and get him to Cardiff City? Then was the when you were there. No, well, listen, there wasn't an attempt to get him. It's just my job is to try and help develop players in that role that I had. And I feel as though that, that James developed well at his time. It just maybe wasn't the right time for him to play in that team. And I think that James will go from strength to strength. Another player you're developing, of course, is Rob Street, who you've got on loan from Crystal Palace. He's not far away now from getting his first goal, do you feel, for County? Yeah, there's, there's, there's no pressure on Rob because if, if, if you look at his link up play for the goal for Forest Green um, when, when he when that ball gets played in from, from Cameron he brings the other players into the game and he gives the assist to Finn I think that what Rob does is like a lot of our players here is their endeavour and work rate and desire to to work hard for the team and um, Rob will continue to do that and, and, and he will reap the rewards of it in, in, in the long term I just wonder if you keep in contact with Oshin Roberts at Crystal Palace, of course, who uh, who is there now alongside Patrick Vieira in terms of talking through Rob's development as a player. Yeah, we've exchanged a few messages via text. Um, so and we spoke, but the, the, the thing is for us is that it's we've got Rob and then we've got we've got another 24 players that we try to, to develop as well, whether you're, whether you're 16 or whether you're 43, that, that we'll focus on everybody and, and continue to do that. Is it realistic to assume that you will have have to utilise all your squad now for the next three games in particular because of the short space of time between those matches? Most definitely. But we'll have to, we'll have to make changes um, from a physical viewpoint because obviously we're, we're, we're a little low on numbers at the minute compared to what we're normally at um, through injury um, and they're still a bit of time away. So these next three games that we'll have to rotate a little bit um, from a physical viewpoint. So we'll do that, but let's my, my focus and, and the players and the staff will be to focus on on Stevenage. Let, let's get to five o'clock tomorrow evening um, to see where we're at.
anyone who looks at the League Two table now would see a Saturday as a great opportunity for you to get three points, which, of course, I'm sure you see it that way as well. Stevenage, though, we should remind ourselves, fighting for their lives near the bottom of the table at the moment. Yeah, and that's what we got to remember in this. That it's, it's, and I said it before when we went into the Scunthorpe game, is that the fo- this football club has had experiences before of, of the great escape and what it means to try and get results. And, and they're, they're almost the underdog in this game because of where we're the position we are in the league. But we can't think of it like that. They, they've got to, they're fighting for their lives. We've got to show the respect that we'll give to them like we have done to every team. Um, and they've got, I generally believe they've got an excellent manager, someone that I've always looked looked at when I was starting off in, in, in my coaching journey and watching him when when he was at Exeter. So I have the utmost respect for, for, for Paul and I need to, and we need to pay them the respect that they deserve, which we will. But ultimately, we'll focus on us and things that we can do to try and get a strong performance in. Well, James, best of luck for Saturday. Good luck. Thank you, Simon. Good to see you. More stress at home than uh, than in the day job. Then, well, the easiest bit is football. I keep saying that, so it's not. <laughs> so no, they're they they're good as gold at home. To be fair, it's just uh, yeah, my my little one's having a little bit of a tough time. Bless her. Um, you've probably forgotten the, the routines of away trips. I mean, after after so long playing at home, it's just an unusual <laughs> situation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, Andrew. It's it's been uh, it's been a while since we've been on the road, but we've had a lot of away games before that. And 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 like I said, we we just prepare like we prepare, and we're as organised as we can be, as detailed as we can be within within the resources that we got. And I'm excited for these next three games. I was excited for the last three games. Now we got these three games. Then we've got we've got big games after that. So it's um we're in a really good place at the minute, and and long may that continue. You got James Clark back this this weekend, is that right? Yeah, James is back available, so that's good. So that eases the selection worries a little bit. Uh, I can't say I've had any worries because I, I was I was quite comfortable with with well, I wasn't quite. I was really comfortable with the team that, that we put out against Bristol Rovers, and what 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 we've got here is players that will run through a brick wall for us at the minute. And I shouldn't say it a minute; they've always done that here, but that 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 needs to continue and. Um, if we keep doing that, then we'll hopefully get the performances that, that, that we deserve. Have you got any other injury worries, injury concerns? Um, yeah, Ollie Cooper's a doubt. Ollie Cooper's a doubt. Um, so he might not be available for the weekend. Hopefully he'll be available next week. Um, and it's the same as, as, as what it's been previously. So just past Priestley, um, Courtney Senior, Robbie Wilmot, Courtney baker Richardson, they're all still out. So Ollie's a doubt at the minute. So... That's, that's part and parcel of football and um, I'm sure he'll be fine. Obviously, yeah, as we as we mentioned, James Waite came in last week and, and proved that he, he can step up. Yeah, I'm delighted for James and we all were. And you could, I think you could see that. And when I watched it back, I didn't realise you watched Scott Bennett's reaction, you watched Mickey's reaction, you watched all the lads' reaction when James scored and what it, what it how pleased they were for him as well and what the bench was like. And um, it was uh, I was delighted for him and, and so were the lads. And just quickly on on Stevenage, what what sort of challenge? Obviously, you mentioned they'll be they'll be fighting against relegation. And what sort of challenge will they they provide? Well, f- first of all, they're, they're fighting for their lives, like we said, and it becomes a it becomes that kind of game in in that sense where we're going to have to try and take control of it and control the game early. What what you've got with Paul Tidsdale, he's got quite a lot of flexibility within the systems that he plays. I think he's played five different systems in three different games. So we've got to prepare for that. And ultimately, what we need to do on the back of that is focus on what we do. So that's the biggest thing for us. And I keep saying it every week, and I apologise if you're getting bored for it, but it is, we have got to focus on what Newport County do and what they do well. Yeah. You could be coming up against Ed Upson, um, a very experienced midfielder, obviously someone you, you, you know, haven't worked with him. Was it a case of he didn't quite fit what you wanted at the time? There's there's always there's always a variety of different reasons why, why why people move on and ultimately it was it was down to for Ed to move closer to home, um, and, and and to guarantee almost more game time, which which I can never guarantee anybody game time, so that wasn't the main reason behind it. The main reason I felt that was that he to get closer to home, um, and he's done that. And Ed Ed's a lovely lovely man and a, a great man, and I, I wish him all the best. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, James. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, James. Hello, Luke. 
You okay? I'm good, thanks. You? Uh, yeah, I'm okay, thanks. Are you looking forward to getting back out on the road? Yeah, I, I just, I just, like I said, every, every game's a game, and whether it's home or away, it's always nice to play at home because you've got the fans with you and you've got, we had 6,200 or whatever it was there Saturday and 5,200 of our own fans coming to watch us on a Saturday afternoon. I find incredible. So we'll, I, hopefully we get a few travel at Stevenage um, tomorrow to support us. But on the road or not on the road, it's, it's, it's 90 plus minutes of football that we need to give our best performance. The reverse fixture was obviously 5-0. I think that was your first home game at Rodney Parade as manager. Can you use anything from that or because they changed their manager, they kind of changed their system and whatnot? You, you look at last, you look at the next three games we got, all of them have got different managers since I've been in place. So if you look at Stephen has got a different manager, Carlisle got a different manager. They've had, you know, and Carlisle was ultimately my first game that I watched, you know, from the stands. And you look at Hartley Paul, they've got, they had a caretaker and they got a new manager. So I just have to focus on the here and now when we look at their last three to five games and what, what, what they do. And we have to concentrate on that. Uh, and and the elements of what we're good at, so we'll we'll just focus on what we do, Luke. We're we're obviously coming in into the running now. What was it like as a coach, and what are you expecting as a manager? Um, good question. I think that that I'm going uh, focus on my experiences and drawing on them for like myself and Carl when we've been involved in 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 the pushes that we had at Cardiff on on a few different occasions. Is that my my biggest learning curve from those experiences was stay in the moment and not get carried away. So we will focus on Stevenage and then we'll focus on Carlisle. Then it'll be Hartley Paul. Then it'll be whoever we got after that, whoever we got after that, and keep doing that and churning out our our processes in training and around the training ground and our, hopefully our performances on the pitch. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.